If you're stuck at a certain rating level and you're not able to break through, it's probably because you're making the same mistakes again and again. In today's chess video, I'll show you the top seven mistakes which you need to fix right now to reach 1800. Let's begin with this one. Now here, white is already leading by a pawn, so he wants to simplify the material. Therefore, he comes up with an interesting idea. He plans to take the bishop. Then after queen takes, he can give a check this way. That would throw a discovered attack on the queen. So after king takes bishop, he can take back the queen and that would result in an even trade and then he can just push his pawn advantage and win it easily. But look what happens. Queen takes bishop, queen takes queen and then bishop check and now black doesn't take. Instead, he just plays king f7. So ultimately, white just loses his rook for the bishop. This is simply a calculation mistake. White did not consider all the possible moves that black can play. How do you fix this? If you're a beginner or even an average rated player, you first need to understand the concept of forcing moves and non-forcing moves. In forcing moves, you force your opponent into making a particular move. Now, this could be because of a check, a capture or a threat you created. Now, see, in this example, white captured, the queen couldn't move, so black had to take something back and the queen was the only piece on offer, so this move is forced. Then white gave a check, but now it's not necessary for black to take the bishop. He can move anywhere else and defending the queen seems the best response. Therefore, he went here. So you see the number of possible responses to a forcing move is always limited, which makes calculating them a lot easier. So always calculate forcing moves as deeply and accurately as you can. When you're evaluating a 2-3 move combination, look for forcing moves and only go for it when you are 100% sure. A good tool to work on this area is aimchess.com. It is a really cool website which analyzes your online games and helps you improve your game faster. And they have this section called training room where you can practice your calculation skills. You can also learn the concept of forcing moves in the explore chess section. That's really helpful. Now another area where most players struggle is the middle game or the early middle game strategy. You're out of the opening, you develop your pieces, you castle, there are no clear tactics and now you start to wonder what to do next. Thinking long term is good but the best way is to break it down. Just focus on piece improvement. Let's understand how you can play some decent moves for white. Look at all the pieces and see how you can improve them. If you look at the minor pieces, these knights are well placed since they are eyeing the center. This bishop is also open, it can go wherever required. Now this bishop is kind of restricted and it is also blocking this rook from taking advantage of this open file. So what do we do? Yes, we can play bishop c4 and now it is on this beautiful diagonal pointing right down the king's throat. Let's say he plays a5 and now we can increase pressure on the d file. We can go d2 and then double up the rooks. This is how you need to play the middle game. Just follow some basic principles and make short term plans. If you want to learn about middle game planning, then you should definitely check out this video. I've shared eight practical plans which will really help you out. And aim chess also has these useful training exercises to help you with your middle game. You can find this in the explore section under the middle game tab. Next, I've seen a lot of players lose games just because of shortage of time. Let's take this game for example. White is clearly winning but he has only 5 seconds left on the clock. How do you win this? Well, if you're playing online then here's the trick. Make pre-moves. Here one way could be to slowly get your rook and king closer and then checkmate the black king. But a faster way could be to simply put your rook on this square protected by this pawn. This king is now trapped within this box and now you can make pre-moves. You can simply push this pawn forward without worrying about your opponent's moves. And without losing any time, we have a queen. And now just with a few checks, we follow the ladder technique and that's a mate. So using pre-moves in such endgames can save you from frustrating losses. Now in general also, you should be playing a little fast throughout your game, especially in faster time controls. A good way to practice this is the time trainer that you can find inside the training room of aim chess. Also, if you're enjoying this video, then don't waste any more time and hit the thumbs up button right now. Alright, moving on to our next most common problem and that is the end game. Look at this. Here white is slightly better because of an extra pawn, but he needs to play this correctly. He goes for rook e7, going after this pawn. Is that a good move? Not at all. This allows black to storm across with these pawns and he will soon get a queen. Even if he tries to come back, it is too late. Therefore, playing something like f4 would have been a better idea in this position, just focusing on the past pawn. Here's another game. Now again, white should easily win this one, but you need to know the right technique. He must promote this pawn, so the king needs to get out of the way. It's a check. He can now hide behind the pawn. If the rook attacks, he can move the pawn forward. Remember, this rook is cutting off the king from entering this territory. Following the same technique, we reach this very common position, which we call the Lucina position. 
Now, this is something you need to remember. First, you need to take the opponent's king even further away from the pawn. So we give a check. If he goes here, then white is easily winning after king e8. Therefore, he's forced to move away. And then you can go ahead with your plan. First, make sure your rook is on the fourth rank. Now, the thing is, if you move your king out anywhere, he will obviously give you a check. And you will just be stuck on the very same squares. So what do we do? Well, you will continue to move forward with your king until you reach here. Now, if he gives you a check, just block with the rook. And even if he takes, his king won't be able to stop us from promoting. That's the reason why we push the king further away from our pawn. So you need to study such endgames, especially the common ones which involve the rook and the pawns. In most cases, it will be the deciding factor in increasing your win percentage. To practice, you can go to aim chess, then the explore tab. And here you can train on all these different endgames. They pick up practical positions and also help you with endgame theory and important concepts. So do try it out. Now the other issue is with the openings that most players select. As white, most of you go for the standard d4 or e4 stuff. The problem with this is that your opponent is expecting you to play these openings, so he's prepared for it. Say for example, after e4, e5, he's expecting you to play knight f6. Eventually he can tackle your opening or even get you into something he has himself prepared for. Something like d6, the field or defense. After e4, he can even go for the Sicilian if he wants to. Same with black. If white plays d4, he's expecting you to play d5. There's no surprise element. My point is that you need to think out of the box. You still play something strong, but unconventional. Prepare two or three offbeat openings. As white, you can try the Nimzo Larsen attack or the Danish Gambit. As black, you can go for the Pierce defense or the Karokan or the Scandinavian. You can use the online database to find some unconventional openings. Or check out this video which I made recently on my six favorite openings. These will help you in getting a huge advantage in the opening itself. And if you're struggling with the openings in general, then I would suggest you to try the opening improver in AIMCHESS. It looks at your games and helps you review and eliminate your common opening mistakes. The next thing I want to talk about is an obvious but important one. Blunders. Let's look at an example. Let's say here we have knight f5, knight takes, pawn takes and then bishop takes. Is that a good move? No, that's a mistake because now white can simply take the rook. These one move errors that we make are the blunders and you have to get rid of them if you want to get anywhere close to 1800. But how do you fix this? Let me give you a secret formula, the blunder check. Before making a move, just ask yourself these three things. Number one, is your king getting into any kind of attack? Look here, black's king was saved, so that's a check. Number two, what happens to the piece that you plan to move? Is it safe on this square? Yes. Was it defending anything earlier? Maybe the king, but the king is not in danger. That's a check. Number three, what was your opponent's last move? Does it create any threats? Look, your opponent captured the knight with his pawn. The pawn is not attacking anything, but this capture opened up this diagonal for the bishop. So black should have been careful. Basically, you need to think about the strengths and weaknesses of each move before making it on the board. If you want to understand this concept in detail, check out this video. It will really help you in your thinking process. Also, AIMCHESS has this section of blunder preventer in the training room where you can practice and get rid of making such silly one move blunders. So do give it a try. Okay, now the next common mistake that most people make is exchanging pieces without thinking. A lot of players believe that every piece is worth some points and if you just trade and the points are equal, then it must be okay. But that's not the case. Look. In this position, it is white's turn and he can exchange his knight for the bishop. But is that a good exchange? What do you think? Generally, a bishop is considered more valuable than a knight. But you cannot just take that for granted. You still need to evaluate the strengths or weaknesses of the pieces in the given position. Look, here the knight is centralized, but it can't do much at the moment because all these squares are covered. On the other hand, this bishop seems a little more active considering its long range, especially because this is somewhat of an open game. So taking the bishop seems like a good option. Anyway, what white played here is bishop takes a6. The point is that after pawn takes bishop, white has this beautiful fork to pick up the rook. And then of course black takes the knight as well. If you look at it point wise, white loses the knight and a bishop, which is 3 plus 3, 6 points. And in return, he picks up the rook and a pawn, which is again 5 plus 1, 6 points. Though this looks equal, this is actually a bad exchange. Those were two active pieces that white lost. And in an endgame like this, the more pieces you have, the better. So it's important to know the fundamentals of a good exchange. And at the same time, you need to be flexible enough to go against these concepts depending on the position of the game. There needs to be a logical reason for you to initiate a trade and that comes only with practice. Interestingly, AIMCHESS also has some good conceptual exercises on exchanging pieces in different phases of the game. 
Aim Chess actually has everything you need to improve your game faster. You can easily connect your Chess.com, Lee Chess, or even Chess24 account, and Aim Chess will automatically analyze your games and suggest the best training plan for you. Even if you don't link these accounts, you can simply take a quiz and Aim Chess will create a personalized study plan for you. By the way, now you can also play games directly on Aim Chess with the play function. And they've also added engine analysis, so you don't need to go anywhere else. You can also connect with your chess coach to directly share your games and reports with them. And as we saw earlier, the training room and explore sections give you everything you need to take your game to the next level. Aim Chess is offering a special 30% discount for all Chess Talk viewers. Just use the code Chess Talk 30. It is valid only for a limited time, so go check out the link in the description box below. Guys, as this video was being edited, our channel hit the 1 million subscribers mark. I'm really grateful to all of you for all the support throughout this wonderful journey. The 1 million vlog will be out on our channel soon. So if you have any questions, any suggestions or anything you want to say, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you at the vlog. All right, so it's puzzle time. In this position, it is White's turn and it's a mate in two moves. Can you find it? Well, do share your answers in the comment section below. Let's see how many of you can solve this. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next one.